This week's video comes to us courtesy of a question by Miles Ponce. As you know, members of level two and up are able to ask questions which I'll respond to in some way or form as a video response. Sometimes they'll get a full Esoteric Saturday video and this is one of those situations. Do talismans or pendants work? If they do, do they have to be made at a certain time of day? And it's a very good point given that I made a video just a couple of weeks ago talking about how the time of day is useful to know but not vital. And I would actually add an addendum to that, except in the case of constructing talismans. What is a talisman first of all? Well, a talisman is a creation that captures the energy of a particular moment. There's a fantastic episode of the Rune Soup podcast where the guest is Caitlin Kopok and she really explains what a talisman is in a very clear to understand way. I'll link to it, of course, down in the description. The short of it is that the way a human has a birth chart and that that human will be a walking embodiment of that birth chart for the rest of his or her life. In the same way, a talisman is an embodiment of a particular moment in time. That will involve the astrological planetary alignment at the time, but also which day of the week it is and also what time of day it is, and also the conditions under which the ritual was conducted. A talisman is also going to be made out of any given material. It might be of a particular metal that might correspond to a particular planet. It might be made out of anything. In fact, a talisman doesn't actually have to be a little round uh, pendant. It doesn't have to be anything in particular. It, it has to be an object. But what that object is, is really up to the practitioner. So let's say you wanted to make a little ceramic rabbit into a talisman, maybe a, a Venus talisman, uh, then that would be absolutely fine. If the object in itself has some kind of connection to the energy that it's supposed to be providing to the practitioner thereafter, uh, then yeah, that's absolutely fine. If you want to make a lump of sugar into a talisman, there's nothing that says that you can't do that. Okay, so what's the difference between a talisman and an amulet? Well, Typically, a talisman will provide an energy to the user, whereas an amulet will prevent unwanted energies from affecting the user. And that's really all it is. So the talisman is charged with a particular energy that the user wants to have present in their life. It might be the case that a particular user has got a birth chart that makes them prone to sadness or something like this. And so they might make a venereal amulet, an amulet of Venus, to compensate, to add that energy to themselves, because that energy might be lacking. They might have a particularly Saturnian birth chart. Or it might simply be that the user wants more wealth in their life, in which case they might make a Jupiterian talisman, right, full of Jupiterian energies of growth and of abundance and they'll carry it around with them all day and that energy will attract wealth and abundance into their life. Okay, so an amulet on the other hand, it might have an energy but it's not really bringing that energy to the user, it's actually using it to keep unwanted energies at bay. So you've probably seen these evil eye bits of jewellery, possibly pendants, possibly a bracelet uh, that just looks like an eye and it's supposed to keep the evil eye out. Well that would be an amulet. That's not the subject of today's episode. So when to make the talisman? Well, I've made a video a couple of weeks ago about the planetary hours of the day. So each day has a planet assigned to it. You can tell by its name. Monday is the moon. Tuesday is Tyr, Tyr's day. So Tyr was the Norse god of war. So that would be Mars. Then Wednesday is Odin's day, or Wudan's day, Wednesday. Uh, and uh, Odin is the keeper of uh, speech and of language in Norse mythology. So that would be speech and language is Mercury, right? So Wednesday is Mercury. Then Thursday is Thor's day, Thor, the, the thunder wielder, <laughs> right? So that's Jupiter. And then Friday is Freya's day, Freya being the, the mother goddess, so Aphrodite, Venus, right? And then Saturday is Saturn and Sunday. It's in the name right there. It's the sun, uh, Sol or 
Apollo. Uh, so those are the days, but each day has also got a particular hour of the day. Of course, just a reminder that the day in magic is divided into 12 equal parts from sunrise to sunset and not into 60 minute segments as in the modern hours. So in magic you have to dissect your day into 12 equal parts, find out when sunrise is, find out when sunset is and divide that by 12 equal parts and then you'll know how long a magical hour lasts and then the very first hour of or first part of that day will be attributed to the same planet as that particular day. So the Monday is the moon and the very first hour of Monday will be attributed to the moon. Then the eighth hour will be attributed to the same and then you'll start into the night time. The third hour of the night is the same and then the tenth hour of the night is the same planet as whatever day it is. If we look a little bit further, uh, I'm, I'm showing you the, the Greater Key of Solomon, of course. This is uh, the Clavis yeah, um, by Joseph Peterson, and this is Sibley and Hockley's facsimile. So if we have a look at Tuesday, the very first hour of Tuesday is attributed to Mars. The eighth hour of the day is attributed to Mars. The third hour of the night is attributed to Mars, and then the tenth hour of the day is attributed to Mars. Uh, so, so yeah, these hours of the day can be found in most magic books. Okay, I mean it'll be in your in your Golden Dawn. It'll be in uh, yeah. If if you've got a book that treats in any way on planetary magic, the proper hours of the day will be in there. So when to make the talisman? Well. It depends. Maybe you want something that is purely martial, in which case, yeah, you'll do it at sunrise or you'll do it at the eighth hour after sunrise, which is usually a little bit more convenient for late risers like me. But maybe you'll want a specific aspect of that particular day. So, for example, you might want uh, for defense, sure, but defense in terms of your immune system, for example, in which case you will want the sun hour all right or maybe you'll want the mars hour of sunday okay so by making a combination you can kind of make your talisman a little bit more precise now what materials to use well traditionally the clavis the greater key of solomon which i would say is probably the most authoritative the most well recognized traditional source on the matter i recommend using the appropriate metal for the particular planet that you're designing your talisman around so for the moon would be silver, for Mars would be iron, for Mercury would be set mercury. There are various recipes for actually making set mercury, uh, which I wouldn't necessarily try. Or alternatively, you can use an alloy like brass. Then for Jupiter, it's tin or pewter. And then for Venus, it's copper. And for Saturday, it's lead. And for Sunday, it's gold. However, the original author has also written that instead of using these metals, virgin parchment can also be used. Well, since then, it's been said that any kind of material can be used as long as it's got some kind of relation to the planet being invoked. So those would be the traditional materials. As I said earlier on, anything can really be used. Now, what should the design be? Well, yes, the clavis has got all kinds of wonderful designs that can be used. You've just been looking at some of them. Uh, some of them are just simply sigils. I made a video just a couple of weeks ago on magic squares and the sigils that can be made on those magic squares. But I've been reading a really nice book called How to Make and Use Talismans by Israel Rigardi, in which he talks about well, lots of other ways of creating your own designs. And he actually refers you to the Golden Dawn papers, right, where a full description of how to design your own talisman is, it's, it's pretty complete and, well, reasonably complex as well, uh, but it's, um, it's, it's all there. It's all very interesting. Incidentally, there's also in here a full consecration ceremony. This would be in book five, The Formula of the Magic of Light. 
right? It's um, yeah, very, very lovely consecration ceremony for the talisman where it's charged and consecrated for a particular use. Uh, and then as an example, a consecration ceremony for a Jupiter talisman. It's, uh, it's really, really nice. Uh, I recommend you check that out if you haven't already. What to write around it? Now there is this really interesting section that I found in the book by Israel regarding talking about classical inscriptions. Um, all the way around the talisman, not all of them, but some of them, you can read some Latin. So what's the point in this scripture around the talisman? Well, it's scriptural authorization, right? So Israel Regardi says that um, traditionally this scripture around the talisman would have been a scripture from biblical provenance, although Regardi says that nowadays people of course can use whatever they feel is most authoritative to themselves. And the point of it is to have some kind of inscription as a reminder that divinity has brought a similar kind of aid to someone in the past. And this would be a little piece of scripture from a passage where, well, if it's coming from the Bible, where God has given a similar benefit to someone in the hope that something similar might happen to the bearer of this particular talisman. So the word scriptural authorization actually fits really nicely. That's exactly what it is. It's saying, hey, you, you did it in the past, so hopefully it's okay for me to ask you to do something similar for me now. So what about the reverse? Well, the reverse is generally considered less important. Some people just leave it blank. Some people just maybe write the sigil of a particular planet or a particular spirit. Something in addition, right? Or, or simply some spiritual mark that is proper to the practitioner and that the practitioner will recognize as a mark of authority. Now, there's a question that I've missed out here, of course, is how to use it. Well, the general recommendation is to wear it uh, against the skin or to have it close by, so a lot of people put them in their wallets. Uh, certainly Israel Regardi talks about putting his own into wallets. He uses paper. Uh, using paper is absolutely fine, of course. You can fold it up if that feels like the right thing to do, or there are little pendants that you can buy. Very often they're designed to carry ashes of a loved one, uh, but you can very easily put a little talisman inside. You can then screw it back in and then carry that around your neck throughout the day. That's one way to use your talisman. Uh, but yeah, the general recommendation is to have it close to you most times of the day. I've actually got a talisman just in the back of my phone, you know, just in between the phone and the cover of my phone. Uh, it's just slotted in there and it goes around with me all day. So whether I remember it or not, it's just there with me doing its job. So the useful resources that I've found are Making Talismans by Nick Farrell. This is a book that's available on Amazon. I'll, I'll link it down below. It's, um, uh, yeah, it's got a few typos. <laughs> uh, it was a self-published book, but it's very interesting. How to Make and Use Talismans by Israel Regardi. Fascinating read. Uh, it's very short, but, uh, but very, very interesting. And it uh, pointed me to the... Um, uh, to the Golden Dawn sections in uh, in the Golden Dawn papers. Uh, the Key of Solomon the King, of course, you can get this uh, lovely edition or you can get the uh, much cheaper paperback editions, which are not necessarily facsimiles, but will have all the designs in the talismans. I'll link those down below as well. This one, I think, may be out of print by now. And the Rune Soup podcast, which is available on YouTube. I'll link that down below as well. Talking Talismanic Magic with Caitlin Kopok. I think the proper word would have been telismatic, telismatic, but I don't think many people would have understood that and probably would have got far fewer clicks. Uh, so that's a really, really interesting one hour conversation with Caitlin Kopok, who is a, a, a specialist and really knows what she's talking about. And she's a pleasure to listen to. The first 20 minutes or so is just a, a warm up, but then she really gets into t talismans and it's yeah, a fascinating listen. Okay, I hope that was a useful introduction to talismans for some of you. As always, I'd like to thank my members. Thank you so, so much for your kind support. If you're interested in membership, you can click down below next to subscribe. There's a join button. And if you click on there, you'll be able to find out more information. There's no obligation naturally. 
In particular, I'd like to thank my level three members. And this week, that's Rob Agrees, Merrily Duffy, Justin Lloyd, Meta Gordy, Osvaldo Gonzalez Nunez, Oblivion Knight, Raul Nair, Municipal Waste 666, Merlin Algoedo, Suncat, Ted Kayser, Grilla Alba, Sean Glenn, J. Joseph Safi, Kyle Walker, Roluch Ashron, FMA, Charbon, Patrick, Alcantum by Mr. Friborg, Mr. Gunwich, The Jade Ghost, Miles Ponce, Timothy Owens, SMQAI, Z. Danielle Barnett, and Jason. Thank you ever so much. <laughs> you guys really are the beating heart of this channel, and I cannot thank you enough. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you very soon with another video. Take care.